Thanks for joining me for another reading through the Bible in chronological order. Today we are on Psalm 73 and Psalm 77 and 78. Psalm 73, a Psalm of Asaph. God is indeed good to Israel, to the pure in heart. But as for me, my feet almost slipped, my steps nearly went astray, for I envied the arrogant, and I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have an easy time until they die, their bodies are well fed, they are not in trouble like others, they are not afflicted like most people. Therefore, pride is their necklace, and violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge out from fatness, the Im imaginations of their hearts run wild. They mock and they speak maliciously, they arrogantly threaten oppression, they set their mouths against heaven, and their tongues strut across the earth. Therefore his people turn to them, and drink in their overflowing words. The wicked say, How can God know? Does the Most High know everything? Look at them, the wicked. They are always at ease, and they increase in their wealth. Did I purify my heart and wash my hands in innocence for nothing? For I am afflicted all day long and punished every morning. If I had decided to say these things aloud, I would have betrayed your people. When I tried to understand all this, it seemed hopeless until I entered God's sanctuary. Then I understood their destiny. Indeed, you put them in slippery places. You make them fall into ruin. How suddenly they became a desolation. They come to an end. Swept away by terrors, like one waking from a dream, Lord, when arising, you will despise their image. When I became embittered and my innermost being was wounded, I was stupid and didn't understand. I was unthinking, an, an unthinking animal towards you. Yet I am always with you, you hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me up in glory. Who do I have in heaven but you? And I desire nothing on earth but you. My flesh and my heart may fail, my, but God is my strength, the strength of my heart, my portion forever. Those far from me, those far from you, will certainly perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, God's presence is my good. I have made the Lord God my refuge, so I can tell you, tell all about all you do. Psalm 77, for the choir director according to Jeduthun, a Nasaf, a psalm. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. I sought the Lord in the day of my trouble. My hands were continually lifted up all night long. I refuse to be comforted. I think of God. I groan. I meditate. My spirit becomes weak. Selah. You have kept me from closing my eyes. I am troubled and cannot speak. I consider days of old, years long past. At night I remember my music, I meditate in my heart, and my spirit ponders. Will the Lord reject forever and never again show favor? Has his faithful love ceased forever? In his promise at an end for all generations, has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Selah. So I say, I am grieved that the right hand of the Most High has changed. I will remember the Lord's works. Yes, I will remember your ancient wonders. I will reflect on all you have done and meditate on your actions. God, your way is holy. What God is great like God? You are the God who works wonders. You revealed your strength among the peoples with power. You redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. The water saw you, God. The water saw you. It trembled. Even the depths shook. The clouds poured down water. The storm clouds thundered. Your arrows flashed back and forth. The sound of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Lightning up and lit up in the world. The earth shook and quaked. Your way went through the sea and your path through the vast water. But your footprints remain unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Psalm 78 A Maskal of Asaph 
My people hear my instruction, listen to the words from my mouth. I will declare wise sayings, I will speak mysteries from the past, things we have heard and known, and that our ancestors have passed down to us. We will not hide them from their children, but will tell a future generation the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, his mind, and the wondrous works he has performed. He established a testimony in Jacob and set up a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children. So that a future generation, children yet to be born, might know they were to rise and tell their children, so that they might put their confidence in God and not forget God's works, but keep his commands. Then they would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not loyal and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The Ephraimite archers turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by his law. They forgot what he had done, the wondrous works he had shown them. He worked wonders in the sight of their ancestors in the land of Egypt, the territory of Zoan. He split the sea and brought them across. The waters stood firm like a wall. He led them with a cloud by day and with a fiery light throughout the night. He split rocks in their wilderness and gave them drink as abundant as the depths. He brought streams out of the stone and made water flow down like rivers. But they continued to sin against him, rebelling in the desert again against the Most High. They deliberately tested God, demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Is God able to provide food in the wilderness? Look, he struck the rock, and water gushed out, torrents overflowed. But can he also provide bread or furnish meat to his people? Therefore the Lord, Lord heard and became furious. Then fire broke out against Jacob, and anger flared up against Israel, because they did not believe God or rely on his salvation. He gave a command to the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained manna for them to eat. He gave them grain from heaven. People ate the bread of angels. He sent them an abundant supply of food. He made the east wind blow in the skies and drove the south wind by his might. He rained meat on them like dust and winged birds like the sand of the seas. He made them fall in the camp all around the tents. The people ate and were completely satisfied, for he gave them what they craved. Before they had turned from what they craved, while the food was still in their mouths, God's anger flared up against them, and he killed some of the best men. He struck down Israel's fit young men, and despite all this, they kept sinning. And did not believe his wondrous works. He made their days end in futility, their years in sudden disaster. When he killed some of them, the rest began to seek him. They repented and searched for God. They remembered that God was their rock, the most high God, their redeemer. For they, But they deceived him with their mouths. They lied to him with their tongues. Their hearts were insincere toward him, and they were unfaithful to his covenant. Yet he was compassionate. He atoned for their iniquity and did not destroy them. He often turned his anger aside and did not unleash all his wrath. He remembered that they were only flesh, a wind that passes and does not return. How often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. They constantly tested God and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power shown on the day he redeemed them from the foe. When he performed his miraculous signs in Egypt and his wonders in the territory of Zoan, he returned the, the rivers into blood, and they could not drink from their streams. He sent among them swarms of flies which fed on them and frogs which devastated them. He gave their crops to the caterpillar and the fruit of their labor to the locusts. He killed their vines with hail and their sycamore fig trees with a flood. He handed over their livestock to hail and their cattle to lightning bolts. He sent his burning anger against them, fury, indignation, and calamity, a band of deadly messengers. He cleared a path for his anger. He did not spare them from death, but delivered their lives to the plague. He struck all the firstborn in Egypt, the first progeny of the tents of Ham. He led his people out like sheep and guided them like a flock in the wilderness. He led them safely, and they were not afraid, but the sea covered their enemies. But he brought them to his holy territory, to the mountain for his right, where his right hand required. He drove out nations before them. He apportioned their inheritance by lot and settled the tribes of Israel in their tents. But they rebelliously tested the Most High God. 
for they did not keep his decrees. They treacherously turned away like their ancestors. They became more like a faulty bow. They enraged him with their palace, with their high places, and provoked his jealousy with their carved images. God heard and became furious. He completely rejected Israel. He abandoned the tabernacle at Shiloh, the tent where he resided among mankind. He gave up his strength to captivity and his splendor to the hand of a foe. He surrendered his people to the sword because he was enraged with his heritage. Fire consumed his chosen young men, and his young women had no wedding songs. His priests fell by the sword, and the widows could not lament. The Lord awoke as if from sleep, like a warrior from the effects of wine. He beat back his foes. He gave them lasting disgrace. He rejected the tent of Joseph. He did not choose the tribe of Ephraim. He chose instead the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, whom he loved. He built his sanctuary like the heights, like the heart, like the earth <laughs> that he established forever. He chose David his servant and took him from the sheep pens. He brought him from trending ewes, from tending ewes to be shepherd over his people Jacob, over Israel, his inheritance. He shepherded them with a pure heart and guided them with his skillful hands. Sorry for the misreads and particularly that last song. Um, not sure why my eyes were deceiving me. <laughs> Anywho, the three psalms that we read today are celebratory in the sense that they look at the the um, what seems to be the injustices of life to recognize still that at the end of the day, though we die like all people, included the wicked, it is the righteous who in God's temple will still find blessing. And then the latter psalm, of course, talking about Israel's history was to point forward to them the history of their own present that they were a nation fraught with these kind of moments of infidelity and, and disobedience to God. But from that, God would bring David, the unique one, and ultimately the true David, who would shepherd his people and guide them with his skillful hands. Ultimately, that's Jesus. But the David of Israel's history would be the shadow of that truth. Join me for another reading through the Bible in chronological order tomorrow, and have a good day.